this is Kymie Rochelle from In the Life of Kymie Rochelle in Urban Lifestyle Magazine, and I am so honored to be able to speak to a dear friend of mine. She's like my mom, Miss Margaret Hill. She is working with the um, San Bernardino County School of Superintendents. A superintendent of schools. Superintendents of schools. And she's, one of the things that I'm going to ask her is what is that in relationships to the public schools in San Bernardino County, the function of it? Because to be honest, I don't really know. And I always assume if I don't know, a lot of people don't know. So what what is the title of the name and your title and what does the, this organization do, this school system do? Okay, I, I guess if I could say it on a few short words that everybody would understand, uh, San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools is the overseer, is the organization that uh, provides support to 33 school districts. We have 33 school districts in San Bernardino County, and as you know, this is the largest county uh, pop, uh, square mileage yes. in the United, continental United States. So uh, we provide services all the way to the Arizona border, to uh, uh, Riverside, uh, 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 towards the Pomona, Los Angeles area, okay. et cetera. So we have the high desert, uh, as well as we have a central, this is the central area, we have the East Valley, we have the West Valley. So uh, what we do, uh, we provide services to all of those districts in a number of areas, in a number of ways. Sometimes they come to us because they need leadership uh, information. Um, sometimes they come to us because there are concerns about how do we, how do we deal with students who are disrupting the educational pro process. And um, so, so we're basically there for anything they ask us to do. Are you a governing agency over them so you rule on what the schools can do in the system? No, we do not rule. Each school each school district has its own board of uh, trustees. Okay, so school district, San Bernardino School District, Rialto School District, yes. now, all those are different districts. They're all each different. one has their own regulations they, that they Exactly. Oh, okay. They have their own governing board. Okay. But what we do for them, we still provide ser uh, uh, services. Uh, let me pretty much uh, talk as I speak with you now um, of some things that's going on, and I, and I feel more comfortable, of course, talking about what goes on in my division, which right. is administrative services. We have the Foster Youth Service Program. So for every foster youth in San Bernardino County, we are available to provide services, either training to the school so they understand uh, our foster youth and the services that are available to them. We will, uh, a, a school district might call to say, I have uh, Johnny Jones who's come to me from Los Angeles ca County and we can't locate his tr credits. We'll locate the credits for that. Uh, we also have schools who say I have foster youth who need tutoring. We provide tutoring services. You know, we contract with others to provide tutoring services. Another area that I have is the homeless program. We do a backpack program for our homeless kids on Friday so they will have food and things of that nature. We provide uh, scholarships to our homeless students. We provide parenting classes at the homeless shelters. Um, okay, because I was going to ask, how do you define who's homeless? Because you picture someone living on the street, someone living in their car, someone living under a bridge. But homeless could be someone that is not with their natural parents that's been placed in a foster care. Is that? Foster care and homeless uh, 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 students are very similar. But we, we go by the government regulation. And with the government regulation, any student who is who does not have his or her own bed, so a child living with the grandparents and have to sleep on the couch is considered a homeless student. Really, uh, children who live in a trailer home where the windows are broken out and there's no hot and cold running water is considered a homeless student. Really, um, so there there are many definitions. That's for a wide definition. A wide right. definition, and we have many of those students. In fact, I was just uh, looking at an article today about seventy five thousand homeless students uh, in uh, the state of California. 
So we provide services to them. We help them uh, because when they graduate, we want to make sure they go on because with the homeless students and with the foster youth, there is really not too many places for them once they turn 18. How, so do, you we try how do you identify if they're homeless? Uh, if someone just yesterday went into a new environment, how do you find that out to now put them in that type of category? Conversation, communication. Okay. So they we, might say something in class and then whoever's hearing the, the teacher then refers exactly. it up and so forth. Exactly. Okay. Or sometime when they even enroll. You know, if the grandparents oh, say, yes. oh, I have my grandson living with me okay. now, and then that's also a trigger that it might be a homeless student. Um, you know, because grandparents, a lot of grandparents don't prepare for their kids to stay with them. So uh, if you find out a child is living with an aunt or uh, I'm living with a friend of mine, you know, things of that nature. So there are many ways of doing that. So we, we work with those youth and try to provide services to them, uh, make sure that, uh, you know, they have the basic needs and things right. of that nature. Um, we also have what we call the Child Welfare and Attendance Program. Okay. And there we go to, we have monthly meetings where all of the welfare and the child welfare and attendance representatives from all the schools attend. Okay. And, and they have questions and they request services and we provide trainings and things of that nature. Um, I also have uh, uh, safe schools and healthy kids. We do the gangs and drugs um, uh, task force through this office. Uh, we do a lot of uh, Excuse students. Me, is that the meetings that they have once a month, early in the morning, that, that yes. I went to a couple times? At oh, the okay. Sheriff's Department, oh, okay. we have the first Wednesday of each month. Right, okay. And we bring in uh, people to provide information okay. to the different schools, community-based organizations, and law enforcement. Uh, we all, and I think I mentioned we have the uh, Healthy school students program mm -hmm. where we also go to schools and provide uh, training for students on being peer leaders, mm -hmm. uh, uh, do synergy days with the kids, especially if there's, uh, you know, there's a problem with kids not really getting along and understanding each other. Are those similar to some of the programs that I grew up with, like Upward Brown and that, like that, or is a, a different name kind of the same program? Well, it's not a program per se like Upward Bound, because with Upward Bound is something you commit it to and you participate on a regular basis. There might be a Synergy Day or working with peer leaders at uh, San Bernardino High School, for example, uh, one time. Okay. And you might work with Barstow High School five times, you okay. know, depending on the needs of the school gotcha. and, and their requests. Um, we also, I also have the Kids and Care program, and that's a program that provides for, um, uh, pro we pay providers for the state for people who are working, but they are what we call the poor working. You know, so most of them are, most of them working at minimum wage, but we're trying to get them off welfare. Many of them come off welfare. Uh, they work in minimum wage jobs. So, and with those jobs, they can't afford child care. So we pay for someone to watch their children while they either go to school or try to wow, improve, uh, uh, improve their jobs. 